Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial, I'll be taking a look at how to do a two camera shoot with just one camera using higher resolution footage and we'll do this all inside DaVinci Resolve. So without further ado, we'll hop into DaVinci Resolve and get started. So this is super handy dandy if you are doing running gun stuff, if you don't want to match cameras, if you're doing lower budget things. I've used it in reality shows and if I need to get sort of two shots out of one shot, all sorts of good stuff. So super handy Danny technique. It's not, you know, the highest end filmmaking, but it's very useful. So it's a good thing to know how to do. So in Resolve, we've got some audio we need to sync up to this. And we've got the video that we're going to bring in. And the first thing we want to do is go to our project settings and make sure that we are working. In this case, we'll be working in uh, normal HD 1920 by 1080 at 23.976 and we also want to go to our image scaling and we want to change this to center crop with no resizing just because that makes it easier for us so that's a nice thing to know how to do so how we had it before it would scale our 4.6k image down to 1920 by 1080 and have that as 100% scale this way 100% scale will be 100% scale and that just makes math a lot easier so we'll hit save and now we can bring our footage in. Make sure you set your project settings before you bring your footage in or else, you know, things will get a little bit messy. But now we've got our footage in. And if we go into our edit page, we can drag this into a new timeline. And I'm going to go ahead and mute the audio here just so we don't have to deal with it. Now you can see everything's cropped way in. So this can be our close-up shot. Well, I'll bring this up a track, hold down Alt to just select one track, up a track. And now we can frame this however we want it. So we'll go to our inspector tab, make sure your inspector is open, and now you can move your Y position around. Whoa, that's a, a good shot there. And now we can disable this track and we can set up our wide shot, which if you want to figure out, you know, the easiest way to get the exact number for this, you can obviously just scale it down by eye and be totally fine. But I know that there are those people out there that want to be pixel perfect about everything. So we drop in a calculator and, and we can go over and, and bring up our metadata. There you can see we've got our horizontal resolution is 4608. So 1920 divided by 4608 equals 41.66 repeating. So this is the number that we will enter into our scale over here in our inspector. 0.416. And just to be safe, we'll probably do like 0.42 just to make sure that there's absolutely no black bars around there. And now you can see we've got two shots, our wide and our close up, all in one camera. So this will normally look better because your camera will be in focus. In this case, it's not. But now we can go through and do some editing things. So I'll go ahead and bring in the external audio so we can sync this up here. And we could just do a multi camera sequence like this, but sometimes it's easier to just go by eye. So there we go. It's looking good. Oh, sneaky look. If we play this back, let me turn down your desktop audio is down here, so it shouldn't be too loud. Nice. So that's all synced up. Then if we want to go ahead and make these into a multicam clip, the easiest way to do that that I know is We'll turn this on and we'll make each of these its own compound clip. So right click, new compound clip, close up. And make this a new compound clip. We'll unmute this audio real quick. Make this a new compound clip. Wide. Go ahead and trim this starting audio. And then we can take these two guys, right click, create a new multi-camera clip using selected clips. Multicam, sync angle in, everything looks good there. Create. Now we have this multicam that we can bring in and we can edit away just like we would want to. So I'll go ahead and delete this other stuff we don't need out of our timeline. And just to show off, I'm going to go to timeline, clean up video tracks, flattened unused. And there we go. Now we're looking pretty good up in here. So if we're going to go through, we can edit this. Down here is our multicam audio, so that will be from our camera. Hello, friends. My name is Theo, and today in the just can mute this. Exciting Mr. Media tutorial, and we can edit away. We're talking about how to do a two-camera shoot, and there's good little bloopers there. 
and there. And now if we play this through, I'll mute the audio because who needs to bother with that? You can see we've got our Hello, friends. My wide and our close up just like that. So one camera, two shots. This is shot on the Ursa Mini 4.6K at 4.6K. You can obviously do this on a 4K camera, 4K DCI, UHD, um, you know, 2K which you won't get as much stuff out of. You can do 2K on like a 720 timeline, and that's totally fine. It all just depends on what you need. And obviously shooting nicer codecs, you can sort of stretch it out a little more. So if you're shooting uh, Ultra HD on a camera that's recording heavily compressed H.264 footage, you can probably only go to about 100%. But if you're shooting UHD on a camera that shoots nicer codecs like the Ursa Mini, then you can shoot at RAW or ProRes, HQ or something, you can probably get a little more than 100% um, scale out of it without anyone really noticing, which was pretty nice. So I hope you found this informative. I know this is a really useful technique that a lot of modern productions are doing, especially in the sort of like content creation space. You see, if you watch any of those like science education YouTube things, there's, there's just boatloads of this which is totally fine. If you want to be even more creative, you can actually turn your camera 90 degrees so you're shooting vertically. And if you're shooting on a green screen or a plain background, you can get even more resolution out of it. So that's another tip. Anyway, I think that's all we've got for this one. If you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't give it a dislike, no matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If you're going to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to Mr. Media YouTube channel. If you want even more, going to check out mrmedia.com slash products. We've got all sorts of LUTs and light leaks and other other goodies that make your life as a filmmaker easier, faster, better, etc. It's nice when you don't have to come up with a hundred different looks for a client. You can just sort of throw a bunch of LUTs on and say which one of these is close and then you can work from there. I know I do that occasionally. We're just like, here's here's 10 looks that I think are close that you don't spend any time on. They say, I like number eight best. And then you can go and work from there and make something that's exactly what they want. So that's always handy dandy to have. If you're not using the LUT in your final look, it's really good for just communicating ideas quickly. So anyway, I think that's all I've got for this. Once again, I'm with you with Mr. Media. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye. All right, and for those of you who stuck around, here's the video we're actually gonna make. And this is the one step to becoming a less crappy drummer. So when you hear, uh, you know, a normal, subnormal drummer play, they're always gonna play this. 100% of the time they're gonna play this. It's And that's fine, but we can make that way better by just doing one thing, and that's adding in some dynamics. So we'll only accent the snare on two and four, and all those other notes, we're gonna make ghost notes. So if you don't know what a ghost note is, that is playing instead of So if we just lower all those notes that aren't two and four, it's gonna sound way better. So here we go. So now I'll play them back to back and you can decide which one sounds better. So there you go. One simple tip to becoming a less crappy drummer. Super easy, you can do this in just a couple minutes and automatically you'll sound less bad. So, hope you enjoyed this. Um, I don't think we're doing any extra outros because I think this is going after the logo. So for those of you who stuck around, thanks.